All right. Uh, so welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, I really hope that the next 30 minutes uh, are of good value to all of you in terms of learning. So today uh, we're going to see how to break down uh, a complex business problem uh, using data and user research, uh, and then how to use those insights to to build some impactful products. All right. Okay. Uh, but then before diving into that, uh, a bit of introduction about me. Uh, my name is Lokesh. Uh, I'm the I'm the scared guy that you see on the on the right side. Um, in terms of my career, I have mostly worked in tech. Uh, I started working briefly as a developer, uh, then I moved into data analytics, uh, and post which I moved into product. Uh, a few companies I've worked uh, in the past uh, are at uh, Oracle, uh, Meta, uh, Swiggy, uh, which is a food delivery company uh, in India, and currently I'm working as a group product manager at Glovo. Uh, Glovo uh, is a Spanish food delivery and quick commerce company. Uh, it operates in 25 countries across uh, Europe, Africa, and, and Central Asia. Uh, and also, in case you want, uh, you have my LinkedIn and, and Twitter uh, profiles here. Okay. Cool. Okay, uh, so now that I'm done with the personal branding, um, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, the case that I'm presenting today, uh, although it will give you some very real learnings, all the data, all the problems that you see are, are dummy problems and dummy data. Um, the intent here is not for you to become uh, a master in the industry that we'll be discussing today, uh, but rather learn some techniques on how to break down a complex problem. Right? So it does not really matter how accurate the data uh, actually is. Okay. Okay. So then let's uh, dive right in. So let's talk about a fictional company uh, called Jimmy. So what is Jimmy? So Jimmy uh, is nothing. It's a, it's a monthly subscription program where you can pay 79 euros a month uh, and then get, get access to every gym that is registered with Jimmy. Right? That's quite an interesting value proposition. Uh, and in case you're wondering how you can uh, become a Jimmy member, you'll have to move to a country called Jimmy Land. Um, and Jimmy pretty much operates in all the big cities, the five big cities of Jimmy Land. Uh, and it does not have any competition um, in Jimmy Land. It is the sole player uh, in, in its industry. And now that we know about Jimmy, uh, just diving a bit deeper into Jimmy's business. So Jimmy has uh, 50,000 monthly active users and Jimmy um, does about 600,000 check-ins across all of its gyms in a month, right? So if you do like a simple math of uh, dividing the check-ins by the monthly active users, you, you see that an average Jimmy user does about 12 check-ins per month. Um, okay, and then also purely in terms of selection, Jimmy seems to have a very solid selection, okay? So we see that it has 100 plus gym and fitness brands, uh, and in total it has about 7,500 gyms, um, studios, and individual trainers across the country. So a very, very solid selection there. All right, so Jimmy is doing well. It has a good selection. Then, then why are we discussing this case, right? So then what happens is that one fine morning, the CEO of Jimmy writes a letter to the senior management. And here you have a very quick summary uh, of, of what the letter basically said. And I will read this out for you all. So the CEO is saying that we want to expand into more countries and we also want to get into the B2B business line with corporates. And for this, we need heavy investment in marketing and sales. Uh, we have been struggling to get funding. Uh, we need to make more money in our existing markets and funnel that money into new areas. But we have no money to invest in user acquisition. Okay, so then let's break this down. What exactly does she want to say? So this is a very common problem faced by many early stage startups. Uh, so they're doing well uh, with the small power user base. Uh, they probably are break even or even profitable for that matter. But there is no money to acquire more users and expand into new geographies, right? So then the problem essentially is that Jimmy needs more cash in the bank, right? And then without going into all the complex marketing and finance jargons, you know, such as gross margins, contribution margins, you know, in very simple language, what Jimmy wants to do is increase the money in the bank, which is nothing but Jimmy's revenues minus Jimmy's costs. Again, this is a super oversimplified explanation, but for this exercise, let's stick with it. So we want to increase the revenue 
and decrease the costs and how do we do it okay so then let's first start understanding what exactly constitutes jimmy's revenue and jimmy's costs okay so then jimmy makes its revenue through subscriptions okay hence the revenue is nothing but the monthly active users multiplied by the subscription cost and we saw earlier that the subscription cost is 79 euros okay so then the revenue is nothing but the 50000 monthly active users multiplied by the subscription cost of 79 multiplied by 12 which is the number of months in a year this gives us an annual revenue of 50 million euros yeah that's pretty solid for for an early stage startup like jimmy but revenue does not give us a full picture we also have several costs that are involved right so the way jimmy's business model works is that every time a jimmy user goes into a gym and does a check in jimmy has to pay a fixed pre discussed check in fee to the gym okay hence in this case a very simple math equation for the cost is nothing but the monthly active user multiplied by the average number of check ins that this user does every month multiplied by the average check in fee that is pre decided with the with the gyms okay so this is the cost equation okay first let's deep dive into the revenues how can we increase the revenues sorry so there are there are two ways in which we can increase the revenues the first way is to increase the monthly active users okay and this can be done in two ways the first way to increase your monthly active users is to actually acquire and activate new users now we can have different definitions for acquiring and activation but in simple terms acquiring is making a user pay on on jimmy which is basically to become a subscriber and then activate probably is to make the user have a certain amount of engagement on on jimmy so the first way is to acquire and activate new users the second way which is more interesting is to retain existing users and to reduce the churn and there are many ways of doing this such as gamification uh, building loyalty programs uh, i'm not going to get into specifics of these but you get the idea right but there's a catch and the catch is that we cannot really acquire and activate new users because like the ceo earlier mentioned there is not enough marketing money that that jimmy has today so the first option is is not really a feasible one okay the second way with which we can increase the revenue remember the equation of revenue is subscription cost multiplied by the monthly active users so the second way to increase the revenue actually is to increase the subscription revenue itself and like two ways that come to mind the first one is to hike the prices so the current price as we know is 79 euros if we increase that 79 to say a 99 this will naturally increase the subscription revenue right and the second way is to create some tiered subscription plans based on benefits for example a basic plan which is 60 euros a more an intermediate plan which is 80 euros and an advanced one which is say 100 euros right but the first option which is to hike the prices is not a recommended option because think about it if users get a notification that from the next month they will be charged a higher amount many of them may naturally churn and this will actually hurt the monthly active users cool okay now we are done with the with the revenue side of things on the cost we see the cost is nothing but a function of average check ins per month and the average check in fee so then how do we decrease the cost purely based on math some of you may say that if we reduce the the average number of check ins a user does every month we can uh, reduce the reduce the cost but think about this if we reduce the frequency of the user they will go to the gyms less often and in in turn what will happen is they will start seeing a lesser value uh, in in jimmy right and in the long term this will hurt retention so while in the short term purely based on math this may seem like a good option to reduce uh, the cost but in the long term this will have a very massive impact on the growth or the monthly active users uh, of jimmy so this is not a recommended option we should not uh, build products or we should not have strategies to reduce the monthly check ins rather another way to reduce the cost 
is how can we decrease the check-in fee itself that we pay to the gyms. The first and the most simple way to do this is asking the gyms to reduce the fee. But again, this is something that comes with a caveat that if the gyms have to uh, um, have to get a lower amount of uh, fee for every check-in, they may, they may see the revenues dropping and they may start to leave the platform and then this may hurt the selection itself on Jimmy, right? But then is there something else that we can do apart from simply um, reducing the money that you are paying to, to the gyms? So then imagine that you are the PM responsible to decrease the check-in fee that Jimmy pays to the gym, okay? The first thing that you would probably want to do is look at the average check-in fee that Jimmy is paying today. So how do we compute that? We look at all the 50,000 monthly users and see that for every check-in that they make, how much is the average check-in fee that Jimmy is paying to the gyms? Imagine in this case, it comes to about five euros and 25 cents, right? Pretty neat. To put this into perspective, think about this. We saw that Jimmy does about 600,000 check-ins every month, right? At an average for each check-in, we have to pay five euros and 25 cents to the gyms, right? For 12 months, this would come around 40 million euros a year. That's the total cost that Jimmy is bearing by simply paying the check-in fee to the gyms. And if you remember, uh, we computed the revenue was about 50 million euros. So this leaves Ziggy with 10 million euros in the bank after reducing the cost. That is 40 million euros, right? And the problem now is how can we increase this 10 million euro, the money in the bank for Jimmy after reducing all the cost by decreasing the average check-in fee that Jimmy is paying to the gyms, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry. so now let's deep dive further. So averages normally are never the answer because averages can be super skewed by outliers. And in this case, although we see that the average check-in fee is five euros and 25 cents, but it's not that every check-in costs the same amount to Jimmy. Some gyms charge a higher fee, some gyms charge a lower fee. Hence, it's very important for us to actually have a look at the distribution. And if we see the distribution here, we see that almost 90% of the gyms pay Jimmy a commission of three euros, right? Sorry, they charge Jimmy a commission of three euros. Then why is the average check-in fee so high? If 90% of the gyms are actually charging Jimmy only three euros in commission, then why is the average uh, check-in fee that Jimmy is paying so high? For that, maybe a better analysis to look at is how much is the average check-in fee that Jimmy is paying at a check-in level? And we see the trend reverses here, right? Uh, we see that a high number of check-ins that Jimmy is doing costs Jimmy six euros. Okay, now take a moment and, and see what's happening. Most gyms, are charging Jimmy only three euros per check-in. However, most check-ins actually are costing Jimmy six euros. So how is that even possible? And the answer is this. We see that 10 big gym brands with 100 gyms contribute to 60% of Jimmy's check-ins. Now these big brands charge a high check-in fee of six euros to Jimmy, right? And this is Pareto in real life, right? You see that 100 big gym brands charge Jimmy a six euro check-in fee and they dominate the check-ins on Jimmy. 60% of check-ins come from just these 100 gyms. And while the remaining 6,400 gyms that charge Jimmy a very low fee get only a 10% uh, contribution to the check-ins. So it's purely because of this variability in the, in the check-ins uh, with most of the check-ins going to these hundred brands, sorry, these hundred gyms, that Jimmy actually has to has to pay a much higher check-in fee, right? Okay. So then, how exactly did Jimmy land here? So the first question that's worth deep diving into is why do these ten brands have such a high check-in fee? 
and is it good for Jimmy's business? So uh, firstly, due to a large number of check-ins and the, and the brand power that these gyms have, these gyms get a very high negotiating power. So they can actually negotiate and charge a higher check-in fee to Jimmy. Consequently, these brands then become very dangerous for Jimmy, right? Because not only do they charge a very high check-in fee, but they also control a large amount of business at Jimmy. So tomorrow, imagine if any of these gyms break the partnership with Jimmy, Jimmy will actually lose many customers, right? So it's, it's better for Jimmy to not have a lot of their check-ins concentrated to just these hundred gyms, but rather to diversify uh, the check-ins that they get across all the selection that they have. Okay. So we looked at the lens from, uh, from, from the gym lens here, right? But also it's important to look at the user lens. So does every user on Jimmy make 60% of their check-ins from these big brands, right? And what we can do here is segment our users based on their lifetime orders and their monthly frequency and see their behavior, right? So then let's deep dive into this. And by doing so, you may end up with a table like this. So let's, let's see what do, we, what do we have here. So we see that users with less than or equal to five lifetime check-ins have 85% of their check-ins, which is almost all of their check-ins coming from these top brands. Okay. And honestly, this is expected, right? Because big brands are generally trust builders for new users, right? And also most of Jimmy's acquisitions is happening through big brands also partly because a lot of offline and performance marketing is done with these big brands and Jimmy in collaboration, right? So that's the reason why most of the new users or, or the early users are mostly checking in at big brands. However, even for the repeat users who are the users with the, with more than five lifetime check-ins, sorry, we see that almost half of their check-ins are coming from these big brands which is not as much as the new users, but it is still a very significant number, right? So then let's further break this down. Let's look at the repeat users. So we get a very interesting chart here, as you can see, that as the monthly frequency of a repeat user increases, we see that the share of their check-ins from the big brands also decreases, right? So we see that a user who makes four to five check-ins in a month does 70% of them from big brands while a user say for example with 13 check-ins uh, in a month which is the second last uh, bar that you see on the graph is only doing 25% of their check-ins from these big brands very interesting and this gets us to a very interesting hypothesis which is that as your check-in frequency increases users in general tend to get more experimental and they are willing to try the gyms outside of the top big brands. However, for the low and medium frequency users, most of the check-ins still happen at the big brand gyms, right? Okay. So we looked at a lot of data. I know these are a lot of numbers to consume, but then let's look at one more data point and then we will summarize all of these things, right? So we see that 82% of a user's check-ins come from the same gym and in most cases, this is a big brand, right? Okay, now let's make sense of all the data that we've seen so far. Let's move to the next slide. All right, so what do we have? So we see, number one, that we acquire and activate most of our users through big brands, okay? And then users form these early habits with these big brands and hence we see a lot of low and medium frequency users. They keep going to, to these big brand gyms again and again all the time. These early habits then form very, very strong repeat behaviors. And as a result, you see that 82% of a user's check-in check-ins happen from the same gym. Okay. And then this as a whole leads to a very high check-in fee in general for the entire platform. I have one more slide to summarize everything. So let's go. The first one, big brands are very important for new users, right? To activate the new users, we need these big brands. These are trust builders. 
Number two, high frequency users already have a low dependency on the on the top brand. So this is not really a problematic segment for us. This leaves us with repeat users with low and medium frequency as a segment uh, on which we can have a very high meaningful impact. Also, the problem is arising because users get acquired with big brands and they keep going back to them. As a result, a very strong repeat behavior is formed. This increases the dependency on big brands and hurts the profits of Jimmy. Okay, cool. Uh, now that we have fleshed out the problem, let's look at our customer application. How exactly are the customers discovering these gems? Okay, so we have three discovery avenues on Jimmy, and let's look at all of these. Okay, the first one that we have is the gym listing. Okay. Gym listing is nothing but think of it as any any e-commerce uh, uh, application where you have the entire catalog listed. So so this is a gym listing uh, which has all the gyms registered with Jimmy listed, and probably the kind of numbers you will see here is that 55% of discovery actually happens on the gym listing, and 74% of all the reservations that are coming from the gym listing page are are listing uh, sorry are reservations from the from the top brands to so to put in it in other words of all the reservations that are happening from this page almost uh, three quarters uh, of of those are from uh, from the top brands okay another way users would discover activities and uh, and gyms um, is from the activity discovery page, which is nothing but shows you all the activities that are being offered on Jimmy. Um, for example, you see here cardio, Pilates, Zumba, etc. And typically, uh, you would see about a quarter of discovery happening from from this page, and around thirty percent of the reservations from this page will be top brand reservations. So, this page is actually better in terms of uh, uh, discovery of non top brands in, uh, compared to the gym listing right and yeah then the last uh, uh, the last page um, or the last avenue from which users can uh, can discover gyms is actually the search right um, and typically in any e-commerce you would see about 30% uh, uh, discovery um, happening uh, uh, from search and typically about 38 to 40% of uh, of the, the the reservations happening from this page could be from the from the top brands okay cool so next let's now jump on to the user research so now that you have uh, all the data it's also very important to qualitatively understand why users check in uh, from just a few top brands and some insights which you could potentially get by talking to a few users are number one, uh, there's generally an element of mistrust uh, on unknown gym brands. So users uh, are not very sure if they will get good equipment, if they will get good training, uh, you know, with these lesser known brands. The other insight that you could potentially get uh, is that gym training is generally a very uh, is a is a group activity, right? For a lot of professionals, for a lot of friends, they want to go to the gym together. And generally, in this in this group dynamics, the popular choices are the ones that normally win. Uh, thirdly, there's also an element of familiarity and routine that comes if a user goes to the same gym every single day, and that's why you see such a heavy repeat behavior among among all the users. And lastly, um, uh, you can you can probably uh, hear from users that due to very heavy offline marketing, both from um, these top brands and also given how Jimmy uh, uh, generally acquires users through these big brands, these big brands then become the top of mind for many users, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we have fleshed the problem uh, from both a data and from a qualitative perspective, let us see how we can define a good metric that we want to optimize for. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so a few key points before we before we choose a metric. The first one is a good metric uh, as a PM. Uh, the metric that you should choose should not just focus on business value or business outcome, but rather on a user value, right? What I mean with this. So we know for a fact that our high check-in fees 
are actually a result of users repeatedly checking in into top 10 brands. But if we purely optimize for reducing the check-ins in these top 10 brands, it's a very poor customer metric because we will end up deboosting all of these brands from everywhere, creating a very poor user experience, right? Hence, the primary problem from a user perspective that we really, really want to solve is to basically make users explore more gyms outside of the big brands, right? We know the primary problem that we have is that users, they start their fitness journey on Jimmy uh, with big brands and then they just hook on to these brands, right? And to solve this, we can either acquire users with smaller brands, which trust me is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, trust building is very important for new users. So the other one, the other way, which is probably a better way to solve this problem is to make users, repeat users, try more activities and gyms every week after they're acquired, right? Okay, so then a good metric, uh, there could be many good metrics, but one good metric could be average number of gyms tried by a user per n check-ins, right? And here could be anything, depending on how long uh, can you run your A-B tests, your experiments, but, but you get the idea here, right? So we want the user to diversify their gym visits. For example, if n is 10, we want the user to try more and more and more gyms in these 10 check-ins. Uh, and this metric, if it increases for us, that is success, okay? Amazing. Now we have the entire analysis. We have a metric to optimize for. Let's now look at the hypothesis on how we can increase this metric. And I could come up with three hypotheses. The first hypothesis, a pretty simple one, is by making users aware of various activities in their city across different fitness, sorry, across different fitness centers, we can make them go to a wider variety of gyms. Okay. The second one, by increasing trust in lesser known brands, we can demand shape check-ins away from big brands and make users try more gyms, okay? Sorry, and the last one, it's a data derived hypothesis because we saw that the gym listing screen actually contributes to a high number of big brand orders is that by optimizing discovery on the gym listing screen, we can reduce the dependency on the top brands and make users try more gyms. Amazing. Cool. So the last section then is the potential solutions. And honestly, I want to spend the least amount of time on this section because fleshing out the problem, deriving hypothesis, that's the hard part. Creating solutions, if you have a good hypothesis uh, and if you have good metrics is probably the easiest part. But, but for the sake of completion, a few things uh, that we can do is the first one is to boost discovery of activities on the store listing page, right? Now we know that since most users, they keep repeating the same gym again and again and again, if we make the users aware of different activities that we have on Jimmy and uh, uh, the smaller brand fitness centers that offer these activities, this can be a good nudge for users to go and try these smaller brands which in turn will uh, increase the average number of gyms that they try uh, in a month. Uh, for example, making users aware of, say for example, live Zumba, live dance, live Pilates, etc. these kind of activities, a user may move away from their regular go-to gym to a lesser known gym, which is offering some of these activities, right? And one of the user experiences could be the one that you see uh, in the screenshot here, the other one could be like this on which on the store listing, sorry, on the gym listing page, you show top personal trainers and some trending activities, right? It's a good nudge for the users to uh, go outside of their regular gym brands and try something else. The other one, um, as I was thinking, since we know that this, that the gym listing page contributes to a high number of check-ins from top brands, one thing we can also do is um, manipulate, not manipulate, but like build a new ranking uh, for the for the gym listing. So some machine learning model that optimizes uh, for for discovery for these new for these uh, repeat users uh, to make them discover uh, new small brand gyms. Uh, keeping that optimization metric uh, as a success metric, we can change the ranking of the gym listing itself. That could be another way uh, for us to make users discover new activities and new gyms, right? Okay, 
another solution uh, and i really like this one is having trust markers for small brands now one of the problems uh, which we probably also saw in the user research is that for users it's far easier to trust a big brand than a smaller brand right uh, which is for multiple reasons including offline marketing purely top of mind so users find it hard to trust new and unknown brands and how can we solve that trust markers uh, on the applications such as ratings and reviews or you know some tags for example hidden gem for example this uh, small gem close to your house is a hidden gem because a lot of people who go to this gym they repeat this gym again and again which means that people really find value in this gym or something like a trending tag which is in the last one week um this gym has shown a 30% growth in check ins right or something which is a purely social proofing based tag like 20 plus check ins in the last 30 minutes which makes the users feel that hey okay since other users are going to this gym there must be something good in this gym so even i can try this gym right and then some benchmarking um you can see that this is uh, something that airbnb and amazon already do for example you see tags like superhost uh, rare find on airbnb and on amazon a very common trust marker you see is amazon's choice okay all right so well this is pretty much it um so today we saw how can we break down a very complex problem Uh, which in this case was uh, to increase the money in the bank for Jimmy. How can we flesh out this problem? We can break this problem down into small chunks and then come down to one single metric that we want to optimize for, uh, which in this case was uh, average number of gyms that a user tries in over n number of check-ins. And then how can we build some hypothesis to uh, optimize that metric? And then based on that, how can we come up with some very easy solutions that in the end. has a very clear uh, value for the business cool i really hope that you learned something today and if you have any questions you have my linkedin and twitter profile listed here feel free to uh, shoot any questions that you may have thank you everyone and have a have a lovely day ahead